Hello viewers, welcome, my name is Barley19, and welcome to what would be my first stream, more or less. Um, this is going to be pretty much full of scuff and problems, because I'm not used to doing this at this point, but you have to start somewhere. And where I'm going to start is by having you watch me fall off scaffolding repeatedly. Uh, I have designs for members of Hollow EN who are on the weather killing team. So, got Takanashi Kiara, Series Fauna, and uh, Nanashi Mume. And as part of this stream or video, we'll be building uh, Nidamai Ienis and Garagura. So let's just get straight into it. You have approximately what I'm going to need. Uh, there's more terracotta than is necessary, as well as some other stuff here. Alright, give me a second to pull up my screenshot for my creative world. And let's get going. So these are generally about... The core is 11 blocks wide. And the height is... The base height's 12 blocks. And the base designs tend to be about 2 or... or the core is usually 2 blocks deep. But there are a few, uh, always a few blocks outside of that dimension in every direction. So like I said, core is 11 blocks, but uh, Ina's going to go to 13 blocks because her hair is a little bit long at the bottom. And it's going to be a little tall. I think it's up to like 13 or 14 blocks at the top. So keep that in mind. Basically, it's going to be, and you know, the dimensions typically get, are going to be like a little bit more. than the base, but only for a few blocks. Uh, set some scaffolding. Just to make our lives a little easier. All right, so one of the things that this prefers is that you're on 120 and have access to cherry. Uh, cherry basically blends in with the white terracotta better than the alternatives, although originally these were actually built uh, with birch plywood. And actually, I need some trapdoors, so give me a second. So originally built with birch put trapdoor or birch planks or birch items, which is it doesn't look terrible, but it's also on the hand, you know, it's a lot more noticeable when you switch over from the white terracotta to the birch than it is to the cherry. And honestly it's still a little bit noticeable with the cherry, but it's usually not that noticeable. So That always happens. All right, and then we got a box up there. Yeah, when I said I was gonna fall off scaffolding a lot, I was not kidding around. All right, and so one of the let's see, this is gonna be. I don't really need that one, but it's fine. Okay, I think we're going to use the wall here. And actually, short sure, one more trapdoor. I changed design a little bit before I, or after I prepped the shulkers and materials. And 
Looks like it's due that update. I think that's the last of it though. So we're building up the face first. And then the eyes start here, I think. Ina's eyes are a little bit easier to place. Let's do that. And that. All right, here's one of the examples of going in uh, one extra block of depth. Normally not on these designs. The bulk of the block placements are in the first like two layers. And then there's like a, just a few things showing up in the Layers above. Okay, and then that's that layer we need. Two more blocks there. And then that. And I think we're done with the white terracotta. All right. Uh, nose is just a oak button. And then all of these designs, except for Mume, have a torch in the eye for Iglant. And then because we have the eyelashes behind there, we need some darker blocks. So we need the darker block behind and to the side so we cover both angles and we get a nice dark uh, eyelash in that corner. And then the main eyelashes are on top of there and then eyebrows are just a couple pieces of carpet. Since those are bottom slabs, they float above the slab and let's go Quick, real quick, and you can see where you have a nice face going on there. We're gonna fill in the top with a little bit of another rack just because you can use any kind of block you want. This is just my go to filler. It said fun out scaffolding. Kidding. Should probably take that one off. All right. And I think at this point we're ready to start putting in the hair. All right, so for Ina, the character design is a little bit challenging uh, because we don't, we kind of don't have a lot of ways to detail the hair. It's very straight. So basically what we have to do is find kind of alternative ways to indicate, you know, like try to pull on the straightness of it. All right, and we want that one to be, I think that is even with there. Yeah, that one goes to the bottom of the eyes. And then going to sleep because I actually have torched up most of the caves around here and a good portion of the farm area behind, so it's very dangerous at night. We've already had one creeper incident, and I don't want to repeat. All right, and then we're gonna do there. And then we're gonna use another brick slabs for detail because it's kind of similar color. 
it's not really that similar, but do what you can. And that really doesn't need to be anything. Let's leave it open for now. It's gonna be blocked, let's go and do that. Just to, oh, and there's a place to block. It's there. And then we're going to switch over to orange wall here and here. Repeat that over on this side. Orange wall, orange wall. Orange terracotta. And then we've got blue terracotta. Um, It's up there, so it's gonna be here. It's actually all one block deeper than I'm putting them in, but we'll just fix it up when we get to it. All right, and then. So one of the techniques we need to use here to give a little more detail is we're going to add a chain in front of the nether brick. This is an uncommon block where we're going to the fourth layer, plus one out in front. Let's do a similar thing here. Kind of, this is the less important one. And that's the top. And then we're going to have lock there. To find a hairline here. Lock up there. And then the head ornament. Goes here. I'm going to use orange concrete here for the between just to provide a little bit of variation because we can. We don't have a lot of options with that for the blue terracotta, so we're going to make do with what we have. Okay. And then above that, we got another layer there. Uh, got some other brick over here. And then kind of the more important another brick detail in here is going to put one here and there. So I forgot that. Actually, I didn't need to do that one. And then we have a similar with the chain here. Okay, that was just a temporary. Get rid of that. Let's take down the strap in real quick so we get a look at where we are. Okay, so. Basically, you can see that we're making some progress. It's starting to kind of look like, you know, we need to finish out the hair and put in the flaps. But you can kind of see the, you know, the, the chain kind of gives a nice little straight hair coming down detail. And I think like the little line that's created by the nether brick there at the bottom does a good job of kind of giving us the kind of impression of straight hair that's all neatly trimmed at that line. All right. But we gotta do a couple of things here still. 
we want to have ears that are kind of poking out and this side so I'm gonna put there and the ear goes through there and then yeah like most of this at this point it's gonna be behind Yeah, there, this is kind of optional in terms of what you want to fill it in with. I'll probably put blue terracotta in there in a bit. And so we got that there, and then we'll cut off those blocks the time being. And we'll fill in there. And having a little bit of a hard time figuring out where some of the stuff is from the screenshot so we'll just see where we get it at the end and then we'll fix it up which would actually be good because then I'll show you some of the tricks for how the depth works and also you can see one of the problems with this design is that it really looks good from a very limited number of angles if you, you know get off angles too much a lot of stuff stops working quite as well but Minecraft is very limited in terms of what it lets you do with this kind of thing, so you kind of have to take whatever you can get. And I think that's probably going to have to get moved back a block, but we'll see. But if we're lucky, then that should work. Alright, we need to be... A block forward on this to there, I think. And we're... I think this is one block too much here. There. Yeah, I think the whole thing is just one block too far forward. Well, actually, that that's too far up, so that's part of the problem. What I'm trying to get at, get as a smooth transition line. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use perspective tricks. So that is looking pretty good. Is that what we've got going on in the screenshot? I think just about. I think this is actually... I'll definitely have at least that block. And yeah, I probably should have gone back to creative and did more screenshots, but yeah, I think everything's back one block further. Definitely in front. This one definitely goes down. Here. And the stone's gonna mess the perspective there a little bit. So make that work. I just have to hide a torch in here. Yeah, I have to play around the background there a bit to see if we can get that to work a little better. But 
where we otherwise I think that's just about right. They okay, want to go in. Decide where you want to fiddle with that. Or just not have that line be quite as nice as it could, I think, for now. We'll just do that. Finish up the rest of the of the portrait and see where we end up. Okay. We want that there. And we're going to go block for the back. Five, five, four, and then we have all the way up to here. Okay. There to fill it out. Here, there, over there. Okay, and I think this one is behind. And then we're just start kind of filling in here. The box behind. Try to figure out the edge. Okay, so yeah, it's a temp block I need to get rid of. But the edge is starting to look a little better. So we're working on the flaps. And those are over here. We're going up three blocks in total. One block over. Grab the stairs, yes, do I have enough? I think so. All right, so we're gonna use some perfect stairs here to get a little bit of angle that we normally wouldn't have from blue terracotta. So unfortunately, we don't have stairs and slabs for those kinds of blocks. And then we're just gonna be slabs on top. And that's not even, which means this is one block too low. Means that this is one block too low. No, we're just in the wrong spot is all, are we? Yeah, we're going back to low here. Okay, and then slab on top there. 
I need to have want to have some blocks there. All right. That's starting to look decent. We need to fix up the corner there. So I think that we need to go in a block up and back. And I think that we'll just about do it. So I think we just need to make this block of terracotta. We are, and then probably need to make the block above it uh, stone rather than dirt, so we have a bit of a better contrast. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, I think we need to be up a block on this side, but we're down there. Okay. Great. Yeah, the problem is I have to deal with the stone background here before I make this work. So I need to go. I need to go and like take the whole stone thing back a block, and maybe we'll do that a bit later. Okay, so it was in line with the chain. We have this nice little stair step. Nice. We need two blocks over there. And then I think we are done for the time being. There we go. All right, so there's actually um, a little bit more we can do with the ear, or not the ears, the, the flaps. Um, you can play with the perspective a bit and get a little bit Basically, I like can get like a. Actually, well, it ends up looking like a, like a vertical slab there, which make makes the flaps look really, really good. I might do that later. The problem is that it really makes the perspective, like one location. You can only get the perspective from, you can like look at this from one location. Otherwise, that looks, really, really strange. But given the location, we can probably get away with it here. But that's, a little bit of extra work. I'm gonna try to get the rest of the stuff in first before we start playing around with the kind of more OCD portions and looking at the reference screenshot. This should be slabs. That's a little too tall. This is kind of a little bit barely visible anyways. So we can kind of see the line at the top, which is, it's nice. I mean, it's kind of completes things a little bit, but it's really, really minor for how that works. And did I leave one up there? I did. Yeah, I've stepped off there, it looks like. dark so that's why all right so let's eat 
let's sleep and let's move on to Gura. Actually, we can just dump the inventory bullet unit real quick. So, I mean, just you can like use Black Wolf for some of the background stuff if you need to. Anyways. And it's a little late, so we probably got some spawns. Just for safety's sake. Let's fly back over here real quick. Get a spawn range. Any mobs that have spawned over there, despawn. And then we'll head back. Mix up his Gura. Comparatively speaking, Gura's design is actually pretty simple. Uh, when I was putting these things together, Gura was one of the earlier designs I made, and it just came out so well that she was, for quite some time, the standard which I used to determine whether the other things were done. Like, does this design, you know, look good enough compared to Gura design, and I just kept banging on the things until it got to the point where I can answer that it at least holds up and doesn't look like horribly out of place. All right, so I'm gonna go there and there, the stairs, slab, slab, and then. Wait, what is going on there? All right, slab here, here, here. All right. Actually use trap doors. And yeah, I've been filling with designs without actually updating the shulker boxes, so. Bad me. Have a bunch of those. It's fine. Part of why I'm doing streams rather than, or trying to do streams rather than prepared videos, and that kind of thing would just drive me absolutely batty, and I would probably tear down the entire Ina model and then put it back up again for the stream or the video if I was doing edited videos. All right, and the Gura. The mouth is gonna have some white wool for teeth. And then we'll do pink wool for the rest of the mouth. Now we're going to start putting up the scaffolding again. Also, besides falling off scaffolding, I'll be featuring uh, falling off the dirt as well. Variety content, this is what you hear. How many blocks can Bartleby fall off of? All right. So that's that. Top of the smile. One more full row of blocks. And then with the eyes. And curves are upward pointing, so there's going to be a little bit. Well, we'll just have to. Scaffold over to the right spot. Let's place these. Yeah, good enough. I think. I don't think I'm going to 
for that. Pass the angle. And the other side, make sure I'm looking this time. Ricotta. The eyes again going in block deep. This kind of block deep here hmm, adds this this little bit of extra depth to the eyes, it makes the colors darker, which is you know not that great on the one hand, but on the other hand, it essentially the little bit of a line that you get in perspective from the court stairs there kind of gives a little bit of an edge to the eye between the, the square and the iris which actually sells the eye more than you would think was necessary or would actually work so for girl we want the underneath part of the eye here be a little fleshy so we'll flush out the sides there although we can probably actually get away with just having wool here might actually need to change it up at some um, point. Um, I think I'm good. Okay. And then for Gura, the eye line. Actually, don't necessarily need this to be terracotta, but the rest here need to be. And then I can switch over to filler blocks for the rest here because this is covered up by her hairline. And then we'll see how much filler it makes sense for the filling process where you want. Okay. So I think the first thing I probably want to do here is put in little tie-offs. Tie-offs are downwards pointing from there. I actually spent the least amount of time, I think, uh, filling with Gura's design because it just came out so well right away. And so, but one of the things that showed up at the end when I was like reviewing, was it the, the tie-offs didn't seem to be coming through as much as I would like. So I spent some time actually maybe let's just fill her it starts there, trying to like emphasize the tie-offs a little more. And so that's why I have the extra little quartz stairs there to try to really try to sell those as little bundles of hair off to the side. So stare there, and then also her little tie ornaments are both blue and red. But because I don't have any other red going on, and I have quite a bit of blue is highlighting already, I went ahead and went with blue there, or with red, sorry. Uh, just because then that kind of sells the, that these are not just part of the hair, there's like a little you know, accessory ornament. Okay, one other block up there and there. And then it doesn't really matter here because it's all hairline. Just to uh, stop it. Just use the rest of the rack here just to get rid of it, more or less. And then. Here and here, and then we're gonna go one back there, right, and then three there, and then one back there. Okay, and 
and here we need let's see it's more than a minute actually yeah we need to be start doing move these blocks first so one down is there and then we want to have so that's it's four total let's fill this in we need that many more should be lined up right there and it is sweet all right concrete there just for variety and it's getting kind of late so we need to go to bed pretty soon all right if we do uh kind of switching between uh, light blue concrete light blue wool to provide a little bit of a contrast and a little bit of depth in the texturing and that was light And we have a little bit of that with like white wool and white concrete elsewhere in the design. It's kind of one of the things you can use to just add a little variation. So we need to give her eyelashes or else she's gonna look really funny. Let's take care of that real quick. And then eyebrows and then put in the nose. All right, so we got that uh, design. We have stairs here to try to sell that as a strand of hair. And then we have a little bit of a kind of blue hair highlight, which I think is kind of in the original character design. Have the that line just be white wool. Uh, let's see, we have kind of a similar thing of blue wool there, and then just for a little variety, blue and concrete. We have that there, wool here, here, and here, and like I was saying before, we have some white concrete in here, uh, just to provide a little bit of variation. Oops. I should have wool. It's fine. Doesn't make a huge difference, but okay. And just for the sake of first things from above, that's kind of obnoxious to see at that point out. So we'll just put that there. All right, uh, and then on this side, we kind of need to have the, the hair framing. So again, one block down from there. And then I think it's about, this one's five. So two, three, four, five. And then over, down, blue wool. Wool. These actually want to go. Well, we'll just put that there for now. We're going to go one further back if we need to. If we need more depth there. And then that there, that there. And then we need to use our last stair here. I think we're done. All right. Might need to clean up the bottom there. Are we good? That generally looks about right. And I think I want to fill in the bottom with some white. I think I is a little bit too close, so I'll go back a layer. But I think that is all the details I was looking for in the right spots. 
Agura. Yeah, I'm just going one further back here. Pull this one out. And I think that's it. Are we good? Yeah, I think I actually do want to not have this all be white. Let's just go back to stone. Here. Just because the white's quite what I want. Mouth a little too big, or just slightly smaller there. And that's too dark. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I think that is the design. Check things out of place. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so that completes everything. Uh, just wanted to point out a couple of things. While I was getting pretty good together the first time, uh, this mouth design is actually the second version of the mouth I have. The original version is swap out those six blocks. Fine. I'll just they'll pop out when I place these. Replace the the white wall with uh, pink concrete, and then the slabs with trapdoors. And the result is kind of baby gura, which is kind of cute. So I'm guessing some people are going to prefer that version, but but for the purposes of you know the guild defeating the wither and you know, celebratory statuary from that. Uh, slightly more mature curve is appropriate, I think. But you can build this in your world and you can do whatever you want with those when you do. All right, so to review, we've got shark, tentacle, Oh, nature and phoenix. Give me a second, guys. Have something else planned. There we go. Too many of those already. All right, garbage goes into there. So, as I was saying before, so really interrupted. N O T S What does that spell? Peanuts. This is the Peanuts Gallery. Will work for Peanuts.
And finally, you may ask, oops, almost. How does this look with shaders? And the answer is awful. It looks awful with shaders. I'm using lots of tricks to make the stuff kind of work. And basically the shaders say, hey, look, you're using a trick here. So pretty much anything that uses, you know, like any kind of shaders that have realistic lighting or shadow effects, they're not going to look very good with shaders. They're going to look, I mean, right now they actually don't look as bad as I've seen them look with shaders, but they don't look, you know, they usually look pretty awful. And inside they don't look well, they really don't look good at all. So if you have like, you know, bullet in the end or in underground or, you know, in the nether, and try to like put lights around them, you can't get enough light in there to make them look good with shaders. And it's they actually look decent uh, if you have like without shaders underground with the light. But anyway, so let's wait till it's, the sun's down and just kind of as a review, we'll look at all the some of the details for each of the uh, portraits here, just to give you an idea of how they're built. You know, take some screenshots if you want to build them in your own worlds. <laughs> Until I took an arrow to the knee. Anyways, um, so we built Gura and Ina, so you probably don't really need to go over those. Uh, Mume, I had a lot of problems with. Basically, I can never get open eyes to look right. They always look like generic owl girl rather than Mume. So eventually I came to the conclusion that the closed eye mouth, you know, open mouth laugh expression was the most Mume thing I could come up with. But, you know, there's a lot of little detailing here because I worked on this way too much. Uh, but, you know, we have like a little bit of, we have the stairs kind of upside down here to allow this little slot there, which kind of makes the black hair look like it's attaching to the um, oak fence. Uh, those are oak or dark oak trap doors up there for the eyes to just, they're using two trap doors rather than a slab just to give, you know, a little bit more offset there, which makes the, gives a little more curve to the eyes, which makes them look a lot better. A lot more like happy, you know, closed eyes and what they look like if they're just like straight across the entire way, which was was going to be big, be bad. Uh, the feathers use barrels for the nice little stripe, which kind of fits the feathers and the original character design. And then we have you know the oak for the uh, hair glint with the little extra with the space there, which basically is what converts the hair glint or if you don't have that space, you end up, this ends up kind of looking like a, an ornament, like a circlet, instead of, you know, part of the hair, you know, part of the shading. And then, you know, little bits of uh, fencing, spruce fencing, kind of, to give, like, loose hair effects. And used to just I tried, if early versions of, of Moon may have a lot more like that going on. They just didn't really look that great. And then for this one in particular, because of where it's placed, you know, all the other models, because of the torches in the eyes, there's plenty of light around them, so they look good after dark. Uh, Mumi doesn't have that because her eyes are shut, so what I've done here to kind of sneak in uh, the torches or some light is in the corner here, I have oak trapdoors behind stairs. So there's only a little bit of oak trapdoors you know, exposed there, and it's a little bit lighter, so it's not that big of a deal. And I have torches behind that, and that kind of uh, the combination of oak trapdoor and stair lets the light through, so you get a little bit of the the face ends up a little more lit up. And basically, there's a lot of places around Mume of like anywhere I can I can sneak in a torch by putting a block further back behind a stair. I've done so. All right. Um, let's see some other notes here for Fauna and Kiara. Uh, their mouths, the insides of the mouths are actually one block further back. The reason for this is that if, you know, from my perspective, when you, let me just demonstrate, because I should have the block still. Now let's take a look at Fauna. 
the rectangle. So you notice that you know kind of looks like a a nice pink shade color for the mouth. But if you actually have the blocks up against the the front of the mouth here. Why can't I get that angle? There we go. There's too much shadow from the light renderer. It looks really dark. And if you want to go for like a goth fauna look, that probably is actually a good thing to go. They might want to do, eh, that might be better than just pure black. But basically the way you fix that is, I didn't even find the right spot, is you basically move the mouth one block for the back into like fill on the bottom. I don't think you actually need all six blocks I think you can get away with just having the middle one. And then you kind of have to, to control how much light it gets. You have to kind of build a little, you know, structure around it. And I've put the torch like right between the eyes in terms of placement. Um, and that the basic can kind of use that to f determine kind of the precise shade. I found if you like left it open in, in sunlight, it would get, be like too pink. It would look too much like the regular pink block. It just didn't look quite right. You know, Kiara, I've got the same thing going on, except she's got uh, pink wool instead of pink concrete for her, inside of her mouth. Let's see, anything else? A uh, quick note on fauna. I'm using azalea leaves. And the reason, main reason for using azalea leaves in builds like this is that they don't have a difference. They always have the same shade of green no matter which biome they're in. Other leaves will change by will change color based on which biome they're in, which can cause problems for your uh, for the build. You know, so if you build in a desert, it's going to be like this kind of ugly brown. If that's what you want, you can use any any kind of leaf for that. But if you want to have a leaf that's consistent, regardless of where you put it, Azalea is good for that. But since we're not in a ugly leaf biome, we could probably use anything at this point. Uh, let's see, are there just things that are not quite as obvious from? The design here, uh, cyan wool for the braid. Uh, the eyes are using orange wool, and I'm using orange wool because I think the orange is more important in terms of you know the eye color than the other kind of colors that are in her eyes in the character design. And it's kind of you know, reads better to me if that's orange than yellow or other blocks that were kind of close in shade. All right, then yeah, for Kiara, like the main couple notes here, like the, the shroom lights just happen to be exactly the right shade for um, hair highlights. Now, you can use other things. They just, or you could potentially use other things if, you know, like non-light blocks, I would use them if I, if I had them, but I, this is the, the exact right shade. There's nothing else that really works there. Uh, on the beret, that little stair there is mangrove wood. It's not quite the same shade as the rest of the beret, but it, you know, I kind of feel like the, the little actual little detail of the curve there is more important than the shade matching. So you could also, you know, do the entire thing in mangrove wood, mangrove wood but the, the color is just not quite right. Uh, the rest of the beret is basically red wool, and then along the hat line or the, the band there is uh, red concrete. But other than that, you know, Kiara's you know, orange wool, orange concrete, some light gray wool here in the transition, uh, light blue concrete and wool here for the kind of feathers. And Kiara just needs a lot, of, it has a lot of hair, so bring a lot of orange wool. And then her eyes are magenta wool. All right, so let's get some kind of cleaner shots from the side to kind of see how the depth works. Yeah. You know, if you want to re replicate this, give you maybe a chance to see how some of the some of the finer structure works. You know, there's a, a few places where we're going backwards to kind of get, get like partial blocks in view from the right angle. Let's just get, you know, Actually, click on Fauna. Basically, kind of like the smooth curve there at the top of the head. Basically, it's achieved by moving some blocks one layer back 
which then, you know, in this perspective, makes them a bit shorter, which then kind of gives you the effect of a smooth curve. Uh, the original design, there's a lot more of that going on with Ina on the sides here, but because of the background I have, I can't really make that quite work. And again, like there's a way to really make the, the flaps look just perfect from the right angle. Every other angle looks weird, but if you're just like, doing it from this angle, you know, you can place some slabs two blocks back from the main part of the flaps. Um, top slab, and or actually bottom slab on top of top slab at the right position, and that looks ends up looking really good, but again, you know, you have to really control the angle for that to happen, to make that work. All right, so let's finish up over here, in case you want to see, and the sides and the back are kind of, you know, will depend on the insulation. I'll need to go back and, you know, fill in the backs here for some of these that aren't up against the, the wall. It's like, for instance, Ina, I don't really need to fill in much in the back, just at the very top. I think Gur, I don't need to fill in the back at all because all in front of other blocks. But, you know, Kara and, Fa and Fauna, I need to go and figure out what I'm going to do with that. And then to close things out, we're going to, well, well, at the end, so we'll just do you know, a quick glamour shot for each of them. And then we'll let it get a little bit dark. You can see what they look like at night. Or for instance, we built them in a cave. Or like, you know, I said, nether at the end. <laughs> but yeah, like overall, this is about 64 blocks wide in terms of dimensions. And like I said, the core is generally about 12 blocks high. And then, you know, you'll have accessories or other protrusions above that. It'll be, you know, less than the full amount. But, you know, definitely like a lot of blocks. It'll, it'll fill up the 11 by 12 area and then there'll be like, you know, room to negotiate. Uh, these are all have like a two block spacing. It's like 13 blocks is kind of the core and then two blocks in between and 13 blocks. And that's kind of to accommodate Fauna's uh, horn slash branches a little bit wide primarily, but the spacing looks pretty good. Anyway, so night. You know, we've got a decent amount of light coming in from the torches and Mume from all the torches we hit in looks you know, pretty reasonable. And then, you know, the shroom lights actually work pretty well in this situation. Uh, they kind of even out all that. Okay, we got zombies coming in, so I'll be brief. But yeah, like, it looks, I mean, comparatively to daylight, I think it looks, shaders look better at night, but I, I'm not going to say they look good. Uh, there's a creeper. I'm just gonna go sleep in the main base or main kind of base area bed real quick. Uh, so we're gonna have, you know, like pros and cons of shaders, you know, areas like this, they look pretty good. But if you're, you know, trying to manipulate colors and lighting using, you know, the default Minecraft shading system. In this kind of situation, they look, you know, not as good. Well, you know, right now it's, again, not that terrible, but, you know, comparatively speaking, this is, this is actually pretty decent. This is better in terms of just, you know, kind of how everything works. 
you know, golden hour is better for everything, right? It's true in Minecraft as well. But yeah, like, you know, four or five minutes, these are all look pretty awful. But, you know, not really actually, honestly, all that bad, but, you know, I mean, the comparison, like the contrast or the, the saturation is a bit of a problem with the comparison here if you flip back and forth. Because these all now kind of like washed out compared to the shaders, but in terms of, you know, like, just looking at these directly, I think this kind of works better. And so I think we're going to end this here. Everything is all done. I think everything, we got all the pieces from the design that I want to put in there. And the new additions look pretty good. And I'll probably fiddle with stuff because this has been the story of these portraits is just endless fiddling. In a random moment, which I kind of part of the reason why I'm doing this video is to stop that. It's like I'm I'm done with the fiddling, so I'll just release these things and then move on to other stuff. All right, so this has been Barbie Nineteen. Uh, hopefully next time I'll actually have a actual stream and not a recorded stream like uh, video presentation. And I'll catch you then.